Uh, hi everybody, I'm Brent English, President of Robust Tools, and today I'm in Sam Angelo's well-equipped wood turning studio where he shoots all of his videos featuring robust equipment. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Sam. All right, well welcome to another Notes from the Turning Shop. It's May 2022. It's a cold and rainy day here in Montana but I don't care. So thank you for coming into my shop once again, and we'll take a look at some comments that you all have made in the last um, month or so, in the past three or four videos. We'll get to that in just a second. Now, the winner for the April drawing, the notes giveaway, was my friend and your friend, Mike Peace from down there near Atlanta someplace. And you know what, Mike works real hard. He's a YouTuber and he puts out videos. Congratulations, Mike, it's well-deserved. Anyway, when I do that uh, comment picker, it's always kind of exciting to see who comes up. And uh, just to be sure, just to let you know, I always do a screenshot just to verify that that is the winner. So we'll get to this month's giveaway and exactly what I'm going to give away. I'm not sure at this point. I'll, I'll make you wait just a little bit. So let's see what's happening. Um, upcoming videos and the schedule. Um, this video is going to be put out May 22nd. Okay, I'm two or three videos ahead and I've got them scheduled. May 29th, uh, I'm calling this the ultimate guide to the negative rake scraper. Well, I don't know if it's the ultimate guide. It isn't, you know, but I think it's a it's a pretty good video. I'll take a look at uh, angles for a negative rake scraper and using it a lot on some wood and also sharpening. So stay tuned to that. And I'm gonna readjust here and I'll show you some of the items I've been working on. A uh, couple of these are for family members and uh, Charlie had her second birthday, and uh, anyway, Cheryl and I made a really cool project for her, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. All right, now, along with videos that I've been making, I have uh, kind of served double duty on that and made a couple things for relatives. My son, Josh, and his wife, Jen, Jennifer. Um, these are salt and pepper cellars, okay? and they got a magnet in the top and the magnet is right here okay so you can see that just kind of slams shut and prevents that salt or pepper from spilling so those are pretty cool anyway video may 15th which was last week uh, so that's already happened so check that out if you haven't seen that particular video this is a fast racer right there. Calling that the fast racer for, for Charlie. Charlie just turned two years old. Actually, it was May 6th. And um, this is still in the works. Now, these guys over here, these are, these are drivers. So Charlie can just kind of play around and give give these different drivers a ride and this particular piece this was turned off center on three different axes right here so if you look at it like this it's not really round it's a little bit oval and i've done some shaping in different areas so stay tuned for that let's put this guy in there maybe this guy and charlie can uh, you know play around with that now this was this was one of my creations Okay, and you can just goof around. It's, there's nothing special about this. Uh, most of these pieces, I think all of them are cherry, except for this one here, that's ash. And if you have a nice light colored wood, you can do some coloring on that. Anyway, I'm gonna end up playing with this and I, I need to move on. Let's, let's race this out of the way, all right. What else have I been working on? Now, um, I don't know about my wife, but I'm getting up there. You know, it's like I never thought I'd be 72 years old. 
Holy mackerel. <laughs> now, back in the day, they always say that. You say that when you get old, I guess. I don't know. Um, I used to make canes. And I probably made, I don't know, 30, 40 canes. <clears throat> and did pretty good with that, but you kind of get bored doing that sort of thing. This piece here is one of the remnants of, of my cane. Or my cane adventure, all right? And one of the things you can get from, uh, oh, Treeline down in Provo, Utah. Treeline is right next to Craft Supply. So there's a, a connector, a threaded connector you can get, all right? I don't have a lathe that long. And this is a walking stick. And it's still in the works. I actually took it the other day up on the, the rims here in Billings. And, uh, it's a, it's a good height for me, okay? I've got a little bit more work up here. And just to make sure that, you know, I'm not being too serious. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the, there's the face on that. A little bit crazy. How about there? All right. Just having fun. And if you don't have fun, what's the point? Um, let's see, what else? Last night we had our... Yellowstone Wood Turners meeting and we had probably four new members and the person that was my guest is Jeff and he lives out in the Heights which is about a half an hour's drive from here but he came to the meeting and we had a good time and he met all the guys and ladies uh, if you are new to wood turning the best thing you can do is get connected to somebody out there there's clubs all over the place, and uh, that's important to do that. All right. So what do we got here? All right, now I had to go get a tool. Um, I'm still thinking about that prize. I'm just not sure what to give away this month, but I'm going to give something away. And a lot of times I make something in a video that I don't put up for sale just because I'm not sure why the, the fit and finish isn't absolutely up to standard, so I leave it in the dust. Anyway, this first question is a really good comment, and sometimes you uh, ladies and gentlemen out there are really paying attention, so I gotta stay on my toes. Um, William Dodds. This was on the Box Elder Burl uh, cord video. Now, Sam, did I see you using a uh, spindle roughing gouge on the inside of that bowl? Well, let's take a look right here in this camera. This is the tool I was using. And the grind on this looks very much like you would have on a spindle roughing gouge. Okay, but no, this is a proper bowl gouge looking at the the base of this and i've had this tool for many many years this is a p and n tool from australia okay but it's a, a deep fluted bowl gouge and i've got that ground uh like straight across as a kind of a bottom feeder tool and when i go to a bigger tool this is the one i use so uh, good question, good eye. Uh, you know, you need to call me on those kind of things if you think I'm doing something that shouldn't be seen by other people. I, I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, there we go. Moving on. Oh, the shrink box. Now, one, one thing I really enjoy um, is getting a comment from an old video that I've done maybe years ago. Uh, I am an old fan of Roy Underhill, the Woodwright Shop, and I still watch that. He's on public uh, TV. I get that like the Wyoming public TV station, and I get old uh, reruns of his show. He's no, he's no longer making them. I think 2017 he stopped making those, but one of the projects um, he made with a carver was a shrink box right there. And very, very rustic, and that's okay. I did a little bit of funky carving on that, but the wood was relatively wet, 
and the base of this was dry. So you form a groove in the bottom of that. It's kind of like making a barrel, okay? And then you jam that in there and it's loose, but the outside shrinks up and traps that bottom in there. And it's just a fun project. It's, you know, it's not really finished uh, very finely. I mean, I'm not even sure if I've got a finish on there, but it's just, it's kind of a fun project to do. And let me see. If there was a question here. Okay, Jacob Harrison is the the viewer. Really cool piece. I saw that episode of the Woodwright Shop and thought it would be fun to make make one, but I'm terrible at carving. Now that's a good point, and so am I. I don't like to carve, uh, but using the lathe makes it a lot easier. And uh, anyway, so. Thanks for noticing that, Jacob, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to go look around and try to find this month's giveaway. I don't know what that's going to be, but i got to find something. I did find something to give away. Let me show you what I got. Uh, I got a box over here full of stuff that's uh, just getting old been sitting around this particular square bowl right here first of all it needs some finish needs a little bit of finish on there nice walnut bowl and actually I did this in a demo can't remember where when or yeah doesn't matter so, whoever gets this can probably make more money off eBay, advertise it as one of my demo pieces, you can get seven, eight bucks for this thing. Anyway, I will uh, apply a little bit more finish on that. I'm using an oil here, so this, this will be totally food safe. And if you've never turned a square item, a square bowl. This is uh, not that difficult to do. And this has been sitting there, I don't know how long. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to look at the bottom. So um, I'll keep putting some finish on there. And what I'm using, because somebody's going to ask, this is a general finishes wood bowl finish, oil based. And I just bought that a little while ago because you know what? I, I keep using up my finishes. They do run out, so I gotta restock that. Anyway, I'll put that away. There we go. That's the May giveaway item. That's a nice bowl. Yeah. Not doing me any good sitting there in the in the dust in a box. Okay, let's move on and, and see if we can find another Comment or question to comment on. Okay, this is regarding the 4040 grind. And between you and me, I'm still learning about the 4040 grind. Holy mackerel. Um, Bill K, four days ago. I am a rank amateur turner. I appreciate your explanations of what you're doing at the grinder. Toward the end, when you were turning on the bowl, it was difficult. For me to tell which part of the tool was actually doing the cutting. Okay, I went back and I looked at that. Let me let me find a tool. I'm going to go get the exact tool that this gentleman was referring to. Be right back. Okay, now this is the tool that I was using. All right, got a nice long handle. This is uh, uh, I'm going to call this a half inch. And when you present a tool, you're making an entry cut into a piece of wood, it's safer to have that bevel fairly well closed like that. Once you get into your cut and the bevel is uh, hitting a surface of wood that won't allow it to skate back, then I open up my tool. And you got to be careful you don't get too far up on this corner here. But that's going to give you a better shearing cut. 
as you go around that bowl. And yes, I did look at the video and you couldn't really tell where the cutting edge was contacting the wood. But that's kind of what I was doing. So once I got in there, I had the flute fairly well open. Not totally, but uh, yeah. That's uh, kind of referred to as a back cut. If you are an old timer. All right, let's move on here. Thank you, Bill K. Uh, this is from Philip. Oh, he's referring to my jug. Okay, I had a video up a while back on the jug with the plug. Okay, uh, I think that was Myrtle. Yeah, anyway, I am from South Africa and couldn't believe you had a piece of Mopani. Uh, indigenous tree to South Africa, I've never seen anyone outside of South Africa working on Mopani. Uh, I appreciate that and this is really fun because it's kind of like having pen pals all over the world. Somebody from South Africa noticed I was using uh, Mopani and it must have been for the plug. I can't really remember. Maybe it was another video, it doesn't matter. Um, Mopani is a great wood if you're looking for wood to chase threads in. Um, find some Mopani. It's wonderful and, and beautiful. It's very close grained. It's not extremely hard. Some of the, some of the wood I have, it's, it takes good thread, but it's just hard as a rock and no fun. Anyway, oh, <clears throat> this is from TrueX007. Okay. Again, on the jug project, the jug with the plug, how did you finish the bottom? Just sanding or did you reverse it on the lathe and use a gouge to smooth it out? You know, I've got that particular item stowed away in a, in a tote. I'll try to find a clip for that. And all I did was I reversed it. I, I had it on a glue block, a waste block. And I just parted that off. I brought the tail center up for support and I parted it off. And that's how I cleaned it up. So I did, I did sand it um, probably on my drill press. I can't remember, but I sanded the bottom. I didn't reverse it like I do a lot of items. John Kurtz, um, in one of my videos, I was gluing something together. And uh, this gentleman asked, how long would you let the tight bond set before you feel safe to turn the piece? Well, I think you could probably turn something within an hour, but I'd give it two, three hours. Um, it's not going to come apart, but, you know, it depends on what you're doing. It depends on how heavy it is and how big it is and a lot of different things. If you're, if you're gluing something this small together and you glue this on a waste block, that's not extremely dangerous. You know, if it does come apart, well, it's unfortunate, but it's not going to kill you. If you have a really large bowl or something that you're gluing onto a waste block, overnight is better. So yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. I'm going to call this guy Phil because I can't read the rest of this anyway. Uh, enjoy your skill with wood turning. Just begun my turning. Very enjoyable with the help of your skill building. Okay, anyway, I just had to put that in there. Thank you very much for that kind comment. Ken Vasco. When should we use a 12 TPI thread chaser or an 18 or a 20? Um, I've got 50 videos on thread chasing. Investigate that. I probably mentioned that in more than one video, but basically it depends on the wood you're turning, the project, if the wood is really hard and dense. Uh, if I'm using a plastic or a cast resin project, I use a 20. Yeah, I usually go to a 16 TPI thread chaser, but I, I've got lots of videos that will probably answer that question in more detail. Jim Carmichael, nice closed form, whatever that was. How do you keep your shop so clean? Well, I have a lovely, beautiful wife who comes out here and looks at the place and feels bad for me because I don't take the time to always clean and she does a lot of cleaning and sweeping, and I appreciate it. 
Uh, she's been out here turning more, which is just really fun. She's becoming a, a wood turner. Yeah, she's really getting quite good. And I'd love to uh, feature her in a video, but she's a little bit shy. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> now that piece that Mike Peace won was a piece of Madrone, and perhaps Bill Brooks is talking about that. And he asks, do you boil your Madrone uh, to preclude cracking? Um, no, I don't. And my preference is to have really, really wet Madrone, turn it uh, thin and let it dry and crack and warp and go, go all unearthly and it's just really cool. I have a big chunk of Madrone back there and unfortunately the guy that sent it to me had boiled it. So when I turn it, it's not going to go all wavy and, and, you know, I guess that's that helps if that's what you want, but I don't care about that. I don't want it to go, go all crazy. Mark L, this is the last comment. Mark L, uh, this is the last comment. Good summary video on finishing considerations. Oh, okay. That was maybe the last video I did on finishes and finishing. And I mentioned Sam Maloof. I didn't mention Bob Flexner. And he should be right at the top of your list if you're learning about finishes. And uh, he's really, really an expert that's still out there writing books and magazine articles. And uh, I've always talked about Bob Flexner when it comes to food safe finishes. Don't get me started on that. Thank you very much for watching. I think we're at the end of this video. I'm going to go back to my, my walnut bowl here. And it's soaking up the finish, and uh, yeah, we'll send this off to somebody. So I'll have all the um, the rules. So all you have to do is comment, and you're entered, and then we'll pick somebody in five days, and we'll uh, try to reach out and contact you. So thank you very much. Talk to you later.